to the Prophecy Club, and I've got Maurice Scalar on the phone with us today. And this is the guy we just had in to make the DVD, the awesome DVD, I might add, Revelations for the Midnight Hour. Now, he was a child prodigy with the violin. 1985, God began to speak to him in visions. And when he spoke to the Prophecy Club, he shared some 10 visions talking about America's fall and end times. I believe that he's a prophet. Matter of fact, when he was there, he prophesied to me and Leslie, and it was right on. He's a former professor of music at Oral Roberts University, second chair violin with Tulsa Philharmonic, and the list goes on and on with the violin. And I mean, when he plays that violin, the anointing falls in the room faster and harder than I've ever seen it in my life. Some of the things that God has told him are the dollar will lose 30% or more and then eventually totally die. All U.S. wealth will be lost overnight. The bride is not ready. Many in the church will awaken to return to Christ. There will be massive riots in the United States. Many nations will attack Israel. Nukes will be used. Israel will win World War III, get back all of our land. Masses will move to Israel. Revival will come to the United States. There will be cities of refuge. The inner will grow evil and oppressive and much, much more. But, Maurice, you just had an awesome, awesome dream. I think this is probably one of the most powerful dreams I have heard in my 20 years of being on radio. Welcome to the Prophecy Club. Thank you. Oh, it's an honor to be here, uh, Brother Stan. Tell us about your dream. I don't normally remember my dreams. It was like I was there. It was no question. It was more than just a dream. It was an experience. It was like a vision while I was sleeping. March 14th? I believe so. Yeah, it was just uh, the angel of the Lord over the Statue of Liberty. It was a terribly frightening dream. In it, I saw a huge angel standing suspended in the air over New York Harbor. It looked so large that it covered the night sky. His body was clad in golden armor as if he was going to war. His face and entire being were so bright that I could not gaze at him for long. White beams of light seemed to radiate outward from him in all directions. He was standing over the Statue of Liberty. It was night, but I could hardly see the lights around him coming from New York City as he blazed so brightly with divine light. He reached for his belt that was covered with a red sash around his midsection and drew out his sword. It was so massive. It blazed with light and fire all around it. It looked at least a 100 feet long. I have never felt such fear when I saw an angel before. I knew this mighty warring spirit had authority from the very throne of God. He had a grim expression as he held his, this mighty sword over his head with both hands. I could see that he was poised to hit the Statue of Liberty and cleave it in two. I trembled and tried to hide, but the angel was looking directly at me, and I knew there was nowhere to go that he would not see me. Then he spoke. His voice was like thunder and echoed throughout the whole harbor. He said, How long will you refuse to humble yourself, O America? You have been weighed in the balances of God and found wanting. Your beginning was great and noble, but your end shall be disgrace and destruction. Thus saith the Lord of heaven's armies, the Lord of hosts, Time is running out. The bowls of my wrath are full of my fury and judgment. They shall be poured out upon you. You shall drink them down to the dregs, every drop. I have come to you day and night, pleading with you to return to me for over 100 years. I am merciful and long-suffering. It brings me no joy to judge you. But you have hardened your hearts, scoffed at my warnings through my prophets and my holy servants. I brought you from nothing and exalted you, O America, higher than any other nation. But now you have fallen lower than Sodom. You have sinned greater than Egypt. You have become prouder than Babylon and Persia. You have become more selfish than Rome. You have exalted yourself in your own wisdom higher than Greece. You have more idols and high places of idolatry and luxury than any Gentile kingdom in history. Your beginning was pure and great, but now the stench of your sin and filth fills my nostrils. I shall cut you in pieces and you shall reap the harvests of wrath from what you have sown. You shall no longer be the queen of nations. Now you shall bear your shame and become the lowest of the heathen nations. Now as Agag you shall be hacked in pieces. 
O earth, 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 hear ye the word of the Lord. Then to my horror, that massive sword came smashing down on Lady Liberty. And when it hit the top of her head, there was a blinding flash of light, and that sword split her in two, right down the middle. Then the sword came again and again against her. It divided her in pieces. As the sword would finish each strike, fires would burst forth. I heard terrible explosions. The vision of the statue ended with an earthquake as it was hacked into pieces and sunk into the harbor. I was weeping and crying out to God for mercy. Never had I seen this side of God before. I had only really known the love and goodness of him. Never had I, had I seen the wrath of the Almighty. Then, as if I was watching from a zoomed-in close-up, the dream shifted, and I started to zoom outward from New York Harbor and started traveling in the air over America. W what I saw was horror beyond anything I have ever seen. I saw the United States seem to crack in two with a giant earthquake right down the middle. I saw the southeastern United States covered with a giant wave of water from the ocean. I saw a massive earthquake that seemed to crack off the coast of California. It reminded me of a saltine cracker that just cracked in two. The great cities along the west coast just fell into the ocean all the way from Mexico up to Alaska and giant waves flooded inland until much of the west coast just wasn't there. It, it, it had disappeared into to the Pacific Ocean. And then I saw three giant rocket missiles that took off into the air. Two came from out of the ocean waters and one came from land and traveled a great distance. All of them blew up in the air, one, two, and three in the upper atmosphere within five minutes of each other. And it was out near space. There were terrible nuclear bombs, but the last one was the biggest, and it created a huge mushroom cloud over the Midwest part of America. Then the ground shook and everything just went black. And there wasn't any electric light coming out of any homes. Then candles began to be lit in fires, and a little light was seen. There were other nuclear explosions, and people perished throughout the nation. There was just twisted metal and charred debris in cities that once were tall and majestic. There was widespread looting, and gangs roamed about everywhere with guns, stealing whatever food and supplies they could find. Then I saw what looked like elite riot police by the thousands go into communities and even cities, force the people out of their homes, and brought into what looked like concentration camps. Some, but not all, of these, quote, police armies had light blue helmets on. Hundreds of thousands of people were arrested in this way. Many would not, quote, cooperate, but were just shot and left dead in their homes. But there were millions of hidden groups that escaped the first wave of these terrible disasters. Revival broke out, and great evangelists and prophets and apostles rose up and began to preach to thousands outdoors, and many were saved and were born again. Miracles of provision, multiplication of food and water, and astonishing healings occurred. Millions of people cried out to God, and he heard and answered. I knew that this was not just happening in America, but the great tribulation was upon them. And all over the world, these calamities were also taking place. I saw multitudes of saints refusing to renounce Jesus as Lord. They were starving, many of them, but still refused to take the stamp on, on their bodies so that they could eat and live. There was what looked like kiosks that were in every little town. They advertised food and water only if you went inside them and took the electronic mark. Some went in, bowed down to a holographic movie image and images of the Antichrist, and, oh, they were, they were awful, but very realistic, and were branded in their hands and foreheads with an electronic tattoo-like stamp. When they came out, if they came out, they had a zombie-like look. Their minds and souls were gone. It looked like they had had a spiritual lobotomy. Then these immediately joined the armies of these police units and were given weapons after they were fed and drank and rested in the kiosk. They were like robots doing the Antichrist's bidding from then on. I knew that they were lost forever. 
but quite a few did not make it out. They were tortured mentally and physically inside that kiosk thing. But if they still refused the mark of the beast, there was a laser that shot through their brain and heart and sliced their heads off. Then they were immediately incinerated. Nothing but ashes remained. This was the most horrifying of all. It made the Nazi death camps look like a picnic, if that is possible. Millions of people were executed in this way via computer systems automatically with such precision and efficiency that I marveled that something like this was even possible and could take place on such a large scale. The technology was more advanced than I had ever seen. Then I was looking back at that terrible angel of the Lord, and he said, Warn everyone, flee from the wrath to come, repent and turn to Jesus while you still can. Pray that you may escape these things that are shortly to happen and to stand in the presence of the Lord. These things are about to take place. Turn to God and cry out for mercy. Come into the ark of salvation before the doors of grace close, and it is too late. That's the vision. Well, that's just awesome, brother. That is absolutely just awesome. And for you out there listening, there is no question this is of God. So what I'd like to do is take this kind of paragraph by paragraph and let you explain it and make comments on it here. In about the fourth paragraph, in about the fourth paragraph, you say, How long will you refuse to humble yourself, O America? You have been weighed in the balances of God and found wanting. Those were the same words that Daniel spoke to Nebuchadnezzar. We'll be right back after this message. How can I possibly begin to tell you what you really need to know about the last days? We have so many DVDs at the Prophecy Club. It is mind-boggling. We have over 300 of them. But this particular DVD is a must-have. It's called Revelations for the Midnight Hour by Maury Scalar. And he covers 10 visions. These aren't just dreams, brothers and sisters. These are visions. And the 10 visions are the Tree of Knowledge of Good and Evil, the six Babylons, the vision of the mantle of Elijah, the vision of the ten lamps, the vision of the Victorian mansion, the vision of the wedding supper, the closing of the gates, three wars of Israel, preparation of the bride, and the vision of heaven. All ten of them, one DVD, valued at $30, we're making it available today for a gift of just $15. Call 785-266-1112 or go to prophecyclub.com. 785-266-1112, Visions for the Midnight Hour by Maurice Scalar. You must, I said you must, get these two DVDs. Outside of the birth of Christ, I think this is the most important information since the flood. Prophet Ephraim Rodriguez was shown in a vision that a large meteor will hit near Puerto Rico and cause a thousand foot tsunami there, but it'll be 200 to 400 feet high and go a hundred miles inland on the east coast of America. It will also split America from the Great Lakes to the Gulf of Mexico and large chunks of California will fall into the ocean, killing millions of Americans. In a second DVD, I put the whole picture together, quoting six other people that also saw a large meteor hit Puerto Rico, four for the tsunami hitting the east coast of the United States, six, the split of America in two pieces, three, large chunks of California falling into the ocean, three also saw the reason for this is because America forces Israel to split her land. Get both DVDs valued at $60 for a gift of $30. It's good for the ministry, but you have to have this information. Call 785-266-1112 or go to Prophecy Club. Dot com. Get the Meteor offer today. Get it today. And now, back to the program. Those were the same words that Daniel spoke to Nebuchadnezzar when handwriting was on the wall. You've been found wanting. And America has been weighed in the balance and she's been found wanting. And from what this sounds like, it sounds like it's something that may come pretty soon. Did you pick that up? Uh, yes, I I sense there was an immediacy about it. It's not really, really far off. On the other hand, what I saw of uh, some of this technology, 
I could tell it was more advanced than what we see in the public today, but perhaps this technology exists now. Describe those kiosks. Was this more like a phone booth that's kind of a little half phone booth that's hung on a, a, a telephone pole, or is it like no. an old timey phone booth where it's a box I, where you get in it, or what? No, it looked more like a, I, I don't know if kiosk is the right word. It's like if you were in a, you know, it looked like a, a, a prefab building. I mean, it looked very clean and very modern, and it's like a small store. It looked like kind of like maybe, you know, like a storefront, but it was something that they could put up very quickly. Just anywhere. something they could drive up and offload off the back of a truck. Yes, slightly bigger, but not much. And there were front room, and, and it looked very inviting, and there were um, a sign over it. And it advertised food and water, and it was three-dimensional, like like a hologram. You ever seen like a hologram? Oh, yeah. and it, okay. it was mesmerizing. You, you could tell that it was demonically anointed. Okay, now these Fox photo places where you used to be able to drive through and drop off your, uh, your, your film and pick it back up or, right, or yeah. other similars where you drop in and you get a cup of coffee, how much larger was it than one of those? Maybe like a 10 by 10, 10 by 20? No, I'd say it's more like a twenty by thirty. Oh, okay, pretty it good size. It was pretty building. large, okay. twenty by. 20. I don't know. It's like, I mean, it was. It, it had several rooms in it, and you had to go inside of it. And the thing about it is, you had to get inside before they really had any power over you. Okay. The next comment is: time is running out. If you had to guess, do you think it's talking about months or this year, the next two years, the next five years? Do you have any kind of guess that we will not hold you to. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure, but there are strong indications that even in the heavens we know about, you know, from the blood moon, this, the, you, this year is very significant. And uh, I, uh, everything God has ever given me, Stan, has been, it, it's, it's amazing because it's, it's been consistent. It's been totally consistent with other things that, you know, whatever. And um, my whole life has been, you know, get ready, Jesus is coming, my whole ministry. And and you have to remember that this time for God is different than time for us. However, I think because of the time cycles, I think so many are converging prophetically into even this year. I don't think there's very long stand do. What do you think? We just had... Ephraim Rodriguez come in from Puerto Rico and speak. I think outside the birth of Christ, this particular information that Ephraim brought is the most important since the flood. It was, in my opinion, it was a meteor that brought the flood, and he says that another meteor is going to hit just west of Puerto Rico, causing a tsunami a thousand foot high there and anywhere from 200 to 400 foot high as it hits the east coast of America. It'll go from 20 to 100 miles inland, and it will also be hitting an earthquake's fault that goes up the Mississippi River Valley, and the Great Lakes will open up all the way down to the, Mexi uh, to the Gulf of Mexico, splitting I, America I in two, that. and large chunks of California fall into the ocean. Now, yours matches that perfectly. Several huh. places in here where you're talking about exactly the same thing. Right when that angel hit the statue and split it, right down the middle from top to the head to the toe, just sliced it in two. Yeah. That sword, that terrible sword. I think it was the same. It may have been the same sword that David saw over Jerusalem, you know, the angel. That may have been an archangel, I think. I've never seen such a being before. Well, there was another prophet on this DVD that I mentioned, and he said he saw a, an angel take a really, really long sword, stab the United States right in the middle, and it split in two. So this sounds like it might even be the same angel, same sword, speaking to several different people because God's really fed up and he's trying to get us our attention and he would like to see us repent. But of course, we would have healed Babylon, but she would not be healed, Jeremiah 51 verse uh, 9. Anyway, then the next comment is, it says, you shall drink them down to the dregs, every drop. Well, if you've ever read A.A. Uh, A. Allen's vision that he had when he was on top of the Statue of Liberty, he says exactly the same thing. Here he says, As she drank the bitter dregs, these were the words that I heard. Should you be utterly unpunished? You shall not be unpunished. For I will call for a sword upon all the inhabitants of the earth, 
saith the Lord of hosts. So what you've said here lines up with so many other, other prophets and servants of the Lord that God has spoken to about judgment coming on America. It just puts the fear of the Lord in me. I, I don't want to see this. You know, I'm no. I, I mean, it's God does not want to judge, but He has to because He's holy. In Revelation eighteen seven, it says, "How much she has glorified herself." This is talking about America, and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, "I set a queen, and am no widow." and she'll see no sorrow. Therefore, her plague shall come in one day, death, mourning, and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. Now you said, you shall no longer be the queen of nations. Now you shall bear your shame and become the lowest of the heathen nations. That again fits with Deuteronomy 28, where it says, if you follow God's laws, you'll be the head and not the tail. And if you don't follow God's laws, you'll be the tail and not the head. Right now, America is the best place on earth to live, but soon she'll be the worst place on earth to live. Now, you live in California. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah. But I'm on the other side of that saltine cracker, I think. Yes, uh, well, you're on the God far, side, right? I'm far enough inland in the high desert here. Maybe we'll have oceanfront property. <laughs> <laughs> you might. No, I, I don't want to uh, joke To see that me. or anything. That's right. I, we've been trying to get out of here. I'm just trying to ask, asking God to... To help us to find the right place, maybe Israel, we want to go back and, you know, my wife and I are both Jewish, so we, we, we know that we'll wind up there eventually, make Aliyah. So. Do you think that this slashing of the Statue of Liberty in half is also saying that America is going, that God is going to slash America in half? I, I'm not sure, but what I saw <clears throat> was... Uh, I did see a splitting of America in two. Oh, you and did it was see it? Right on the Mississippi, and it went all the way up. It was right, right at that area. And, but there were other cracks. It was like, like, like a, a fissures, you know, that would go out from there. And it was, it was like it sunk into, into the earth. It went like So that. you saw it right up the Mississippi River Valley, right up to the Great Lakes? Yes, sir. That's right. This is almost exactly what Ephraim Rodriguez said about the meteor. He said, you saw a giant earthquake split America right down the middle. I saw the southeastern United States covered with a giant wave of water, that's a tsunami, and a massive earthquake that just seemed to crack off the coast of California. It yeah, reminded that's me what it of, looked It was exactly like that. It reminded exactly. me of a saltine cracker. Like a saltine cracker. That just, just went, cracked in two. Yeah, it just cracked right off. Wow. And you saw this go all the way up into Alaska. Mm-hmm. So this is not just California. This is all up the West Coast. Yeah. It okay, was right so, along that, that fault line that, that goes all the way up. And it just went like that. You saw essentially the destruction of America because by the time you see that it's split in the middle and a tsunami hits the East Coast and the West Coast falls into the ocean, it's over. I mean... Probably eighty percent of the population I, lives in those areas. Wow! Yeah, that's true. Right? But, but the thing that that, that was uh, unique about, or or just so surprising, was it matched the when the 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 angel first. The first thing that happened was it just she just, uh, he just just cut it in two down the middle. Right. And then he started to then he started to to you know hack like you know go side to side and just split off the pieces of the statue and and then it it, it like fell it it well no actually it's like it sliced it this way and it went clink and then clink and it, it just this sword was such a mighty weapon you have no idea I mean it's like whoa and I know that it was happening in America as he did it as the angel struck the statue at that same time. Okay, now so I don't know how I don't know if there's a lot of time in between or, or, or if it's all at once, but it sure looked like it God was pissed, you know. Okay, now let's go to the next one where you said I saw three giant rockets. Now you saw these explode in the air and you said that it was out near space, three That's terrible right. nuclear bombs. I saw two come out of the sea. They actually I knew they were from submarines. 
near America. They weren't as big of, but they all went, it's like one and then, and then another. And then there was one that came, it was an ICBM, I think, and came from a, a overseas. Okay. And, Do you understand it, what those it, are? Huh? Do you understand what those are, what they were doing? I think that's an M M P A E M P. Very good. Yes, yeah. that's exactly right. All right now, I think that's what it was. In, yeah. ni- in 1985, Henry Groover had a vision where he was lifted up above the earth, looking down on the earth like a globe. And he said that he saw submarines coming up out of the water. But before he saw the submarines come up and launch the nuclear weapons, he said he saw that our communications just sprinkled down like dust. In other words, that apparently... What happens first is they take out all of our communications. I've said many times on the radio, if you want to know what the first thing is uh, that you'll notice when we're under Russian attack is that nothing electronic works. Uh, Mm. Your cell phones don't work. Your TVs don't work. All electricity's out because they they launch these EMP-type nuclear weapons high into the atmosphere. Yes, it it was definitely not on the Earth. It was above the Earth. Okay, so you saw that. You confirmed that. So... Let me just say, all you brothers and sisters out there, you might be hearing this and saying, oh, this is the biggest bunch of, I never heard. These guys are totally off of the rocker. Well, look, uh, this prophecy is confirmed by what Henry Gruber saw, which is confirmed by what A.A. Allen saw, which was confirmed by what we just had Ephraim Rodriguez come in and speak for. So this is in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Many different men and women of God have seen this. and you can ignore it. If you want to, but you'll be doing so to your own peril. Just like it says here, you have hardened your hearts and scoffed at my warnings through my prophets, through my holy servants, and I brought you from nothing and exalted you, America, higher than any other nation. And yet America won't hear. She will not hear God anymore. And so that leaves nothing but judgment. How can I possibly begin to tell you what you really need to know about the last days? We have so many DVDs at the Prophecy Club. It is mind-boggling. We have over 300 of them. But this particular DVD is a must-have. It's called Revelations for the Midnight Hour by Maury Scalar. And he covers 10 visions. These aren't just dreams, brothers and sisters. These are visions. And the 10 visions are the Tree of Knowledge of Good and Evil, the Six Babylons, the Vision of the Mantle of Elijah, the Vision of the Ten Lamps, the Vision of the Victorian Mansion, the Vision of the Wedding Supper, the Closing of the Gates, Three Wars of Israel, Preparation of the Bride, and the Vision of Heaven. All 10 of them, one DVD, valued at $30. We're making it available today for a gift of just $15. Call 785-266-1112 or go to prophecyclub.com. 785-266-1112, Visions for the Midnight Hour by Maurice Scalar. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. You must, I said you must get these two DVDs. Outside of the birth of Christ, I think this is the most important information since the flood. Prophet Ephraim Rodriguez was shown in a vision that a large meteor will hit near Puerto Rico and cause a thousand foot tsunami there, but it'll be 200 to 400 feet high and go a hundred miles inland on the east coast of America. It will also split America from the Great Lakes to the Gulf of Mexico and large chunks of California will fall into the ocean, killing millions of Americans. In a second DVD, I put the whole picture together, quoting six other people that also saw a large meteor hit Puerto Rico, four for the tsunami hitting the east coast of the United States, six the split of America in two pieces, three large chunks of California falling into the ocean, three also saw the reason for this is because America forces Israel to split her land. Get both DVDs valued at $60 for a gift of $30. It's good for the ministry, but you have to have this information. Call 785-266-1112 or go to prophecyclub.com. Get the Meteor offer today. Get it today. Welcome to the Prophecy Club. Maurice Scalar just had 
the most awesome dream and vision I think he has ever had and one of the most powerful that we have ever read on the radio. Now, in yesterday's broadcast, I discussed this with Maurice, and he read and explained his dream. Then we went on talking for another hour or so, and I've edited that down, and I'm going to play the last part of that here in just a moment. But I'm going to back up and replay about the first 10 minutes of him explaining that vision. Then we're going to continue talking about it. It was a terribly frightening dream. In it, I saw a huge angel standing suspended in the air over New York Harbor. It looked so large that it covered the night sky. His body was clad in golden armor, as if he was going to war. His face and entire being were so bright that I could not gaze at him for long. White beams of light seemed to radiate outward from him in all directions. He was standing over the Statue of Liberty. It was night, but I could hardly see the lights around him coming from New York City as he blazed so brightly with divine light. He reached for his belt that was covered with a red sash around his midsection and drew out his sword. It was so massive. It blazed with light and fire all around it. It looked at least a 100 feet long. I have never felt such fear when I saw an angel before. I knew this mighty warring spirit had authority from the very throne of God. He had a grim expression as he held his, this mighty sword over his head with both hands. I could see that he was poised to hit the Statue of Liberty and cleave it in two. I trembled and tried to hide, but the angel was looking directly at me, and I knew there was nowhere to go that he would not see me. Then he spoke. His voice was like thunder and echoed throughout the whole harbor. He said, How long will you refuse to humble yourself, O America? You have been weighed in the balances of God and found wanting. Your beginning was great and noble, but your end shall be disgrace and destruction. Thus saith the Lord of heaven's armies, the Lord of hosts, Time is running out. The bowls of my wrath are full of my fury and judgment. They shall be poured out upon you. You shall drink them down to the dregs every drop. I have come to you day and night pleading with you to return to me, for over 100 years, I am merciful and long-suffering. It brings me no joy to judge you. But you have hardened your hearts, scoffed at my warnings through my prophets and my holy servants. I brought you from nothing and exalted you, O America, higher than any other nation. But now you have fallen lower than Sodom. You have sinned greater than Egypt. You have become prouder than Babylon and Persia. You have become more selfish than Rome. You have exalted yourself in your own wisdom higher than Greece. You have more idols and high places of idolatry and luxury than any Gentile kingdom in history. Your beginning was pure and great, but now the stench of your sin and filth fills my nostrils. I shall cut you in pieces, and you shall reap the harvests of wrath from what you have sown. You shall no longer be the queen of nations, now you shall bear your shame and become the lowest of the heathen nations. Now as Agag, you shall be hacked in pieces. O earth, 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 hear ye the word of the Lord. Then to my horror, that massive sword came smashing down on Lady Liberty. And when it hit the top of her head, there was a blinding flash of light, and that sword split her in two, right down the middle. Then the sword came again and again against her. It divided her in pieces. As the sword would finish each strike, fires would burst forth. I heard terrible explosions. The vision of the statue ended with an earthquake as it was hacked into pieces and sunk into the harbor. I was weeping and crying out to God for mercy. Never had I seen this side of God before. I had only really known the love and goodness of him. Never had I, had I seen the wrath of the Almighty. Then, as if I was watching from a zoomed-in close-up, the dream shifted, and I started to zoom outward from New York Harbor and started traveling in the air over America. W what I saw was horror beyond anything I have ever seen. I saw the United States seem to crack in two with a giant earthquake right down the middle. I saw the southeastern United States covered with a giant wave of water from the ocean. I saw a massive earthquake that seemed to crack off the coast of California. 
It reminded me of a saltine cracker that just cracked in two. The great cities along the West Coast just fell into the ocean all the way from Mexico up to Alaska and giant waves flooded inland until much of the West Coast just wasn't there. It, it, it had disappeared into to the Pacific Ocean. And then I saw three giant rocket missiles that took off into the air. Two came from out of the ocean waters and one came from land and traveled a great distance. All of them blew up in the air, one, two, and three in the upper atmosphere within five minutes of each other. And it was out near space. There were terrible nuclear bombs, but the last one was the biggest, and it created a huge mushroom cloud over the Midwest part of America. Then the ground shook and everything just went black. There wasn't any electric light coming out of any homes. Then candles began to be lit in fires and a little light was seen. There were other nuclear explosions and people perished throughout the nation. There was just twisted metal and charred debris in cities that once were tall and majestic. There was widespread looting and gangs roamed about everywhere with guns, stealing whatever food and supplies they could find. Then I saw what looked like elite riot police by the thousands go into communities and even cities, force the people out of their homes and brought into what looked like concentration camps. Some, but not all of these, quote, police armies had light blue helmets on. Hundreds of thousands of people were arrested in this way. Many would not, quote, cooperate, but were just shot and left dead in their homes. But there were millions of hidden groups that escaped the first wave of these terrible disasters. Revival broke out and great evangelists and prophets and apostles rose up and began to preach to thousands outdoors. And many were saved and were born again. Miracles of provision, multiplication of food and water, and astonishing healings occurred. Millions of people cried out to God and he heard and answered. I knew that this was not just happening in America but the great tribulation was upon them. And all over the world, these calamities were also taking place. I saw multitudes of saints refusing to renounce Jesus as Lord. They were starving, many of them, but still refused to take the stamp on, on their bodies so that they could eat and live. There was what looked like kiosks that were in every little town. They advertised food and water only if you went inside them and took the electronic mark. Some went in, bowed down to a holographic movie image and images of the Antichrist. And, oh, they were, they were awful, but very realistic. And were branded in their hands and foreheads with an electronic tattoo-like stamp. When they came out, if they came out, they had a zombie-like look. Their minds and souls were gone. It looked like they had had a spiritual lobotomy. Then these immediately joined the armies of these police units and were given weapons after they were fed and drank and rested in the kiosk. They were like robots doing the Antichrist's bidding from then on. I knew that they were lost forever, but quite a few did not make it out. They were tortured mentally and physically inside that kiosk thing but if they still refused the mark of the beast, there was a laser that shot through their brain and heart and sliced their heads off. Then they were immediately incinerated. Nothing but ashes remained. This was the most horrifying of all. It made the Nazi death camps look like a picnic, if that is possible. Millions of people were executed in this way via computer systems automatically with such precision and efficiency that I marveled that something like this was even possible and could take place on such a large scale. The technology was more advanced than I had ever seen. Then I was looking back at that terrible angel of the Lord, and he said, Warn everyone, flee from the wrath to come, repent and turn to Jesus while you still can. Pray that you may escape these things that are shortly to happen, and to stand in the presence of the Lord. These things are about to take place. Turn to God and cry out for mercy. Come into the ark of salvation before the doors of grace close, and it is too late. That's the vision. Well, that's just awesome, brother. That is absolutely just awesome. And for you out there listening, there is no question 
This is of God. Now we're going to go on to us continuing to discuss this dream, picking it up from yesterday's discussion. Maurice Scalar. So these three rockets you saw were definitely EMP. Yes. Knocking out all of our communications. All right, that makes sense. I saw me. other nuclear explosions also, but not as clear. I didn't, these, it was like I saw them, and I think it was the beginning of a nuclear attack of some kind. I saw, I knew cities were also targeted and there were other bombs. But these were what I saw. And then I saw on the earth, I saw all the lights go out. Yes, and well, that's the EMP. I that's what... saw candles being lit. I mean, because not everybody, not, not everybody died in this, but they lost, we lost our power. And I noticed one of them, this dream, one of the things that was so alarming of, you know, the different scenes I saw was no food and water. People were starving. Yeah. These riot police came in to homes. They would either be willing to go off to these camps that they had, or they would just shoot them. They just shot them and left them for dead in their home. Yeah, they, they don't take any mercy. And yeah. but, but the thing about it was... They, they were they were like this zombie like it looked like one of those those science fiction movies where they've been you know there's no they 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 drank the cool well whatever took the mark I think it, there's this there's this mind control thing they were just these the they were just lockstep you couldn't you know they, they weren't thinking at all they were just being controlled uh, like a mind control and they would just shoot people and leave them okay and then you saw. These concentration camps, were they like the barbed wire concentration camps? <clears throat> no, no, not really. They look more like a 70s junior high school. <laughs> you know, you ever remember? You know, it, they were, they looked like they had already been built. There was, there were fences around them, but the people weren't resistant at all. They just walked right in and, and they were being, there were like tents and how, I didn't, I didn't talk about this in the, what I wrote down, but uh, there were like tent cities kind of thing, you know, with small tents and and uh, but there were people being executed just like in the Nazi camps. But they had this very sophisticated way of doing it, and they seemed to trick people. You're going to get a wonderful meal yeah. come in here, and 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 you know you you will have clothes for you. We have we'll meet your needs. You'll be happy. And and this was also repeated in that kiosk thing. But every time it was this same, it was like a hologram movie that would, but it wasn't a movie. It would actually, the leader, you know, the Antichrist would stand. It, it was the same, it was like he was there, but he wasn't there. And it was all done automatically by computer. And, and he would have this speech and say, you know, you're going to be happy and you need to be, you know, with us. And, and then they would just, completely be given over to satan it's terrible we had uh lord wants to say something can i oh my people come out of babylon do not be a part with her for her sins have come to the fullness and i will judge her america has joined with babylon do not be a part with her come out from among her says the spirit of grace the time is short the deception will grow and grow, and people will start to drink of the wine of Babylon and be deceived, and they will be drunken, and the nations will just totter and teeter to and fro. There will be terrible, terrible deception. You will not have the capacity to come back. Oh, come out of her. This is my warning to you, for I have a place prepared for you. Come and follow me, only by me, the Lord, can you be saved, for even the elect even the elect could be deceived in this last hour. I am shortening the days. Yes, the time is short. I will not, I will not tarry forever. I will not uh, stop to plead with you to come out, come out and let me wash you in my blood that you partake, you do not partake with her sins. You do not become a part of this terrible, terrible trap that will cover the earth. It's coming. The storm is coming. Come out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her, my people, saith the Lord. 
Amen, brother. I hope you folks out there can recognize the word of the Lord. Ken Peters made a DVD for us in 2001, I believe it was. Might have been 2000, called I Saw the Tribulation. And in this, he tells about how he was standing in line. There would be people in line that were walking up and down the line with um, clipboards in their hands saying, we have food, we have a dry place for you to sleep, we have everything you need, all you have to do is step out of line and deny him. And they would never say the name Jesus. They would say, all you have to do is deny him. And this sounds like what you're talking about here, where they're asking people to deny Christ, right? Yes. The, the, well, that is what anti-Christ would mean, wouldn't it? That's Anti-Messiah. Right. Against, yes, because in the spirit realm, there aren't lots of different ways. There's only, there's only one redemption for man, and that's through Jesus. And, and yes, and these extreme measures of torture, like what I saw was there were some of the people that would not yield, even when they were told, you know, you can eat, you can sleep, you can get all these things wonderful things. And then there would be like this, I don't know if it was electric or it was some sort, but it was a mental torture that was so horrible. People would scream and they would torture them and say, deny, deny uh, Jesus, renounce and take the mark. And it was all about, and it was, it was really, really uh, hard. Some couldn't survive it. Some, many did, but some just God rose up in them and and kept them from it, just like he did in the days of, of, you know, Diocletian or uh, the Roman Perseus or the, you know, they would not deny him. Right. And and then then I saw, like what I said, I saw this kind of execution, but it wasn't, it was just these red lasers that would shoot out from one side and other side and then through the heart. And it would just hit them and it just, the, their brain, it would just fry their brains. And then this, this, that same laser would just go, shh, and their head would just come right off. And then they wow. were incinerated. And all of this happened, like, in five seconds. Wow. And they were gone. They were just gone. There wow. was no body. There was just a pile of ashes. That was it. From what I saw, I mean, again, I, it, this was a dream, okay? Some people say, yeah, you, you ate something funny, you know? No, okay. I don't think so. But... This was so vivid and is so startling. I think it's a warning because I think that there are realms of mind control now that we don't even know. There's technology even now that we don't know about. Yeah. Other. They haven't and shown us all of their it's cards. It's being developed and uh, it's in the realm of, uh, some people call it singularity, which is uh, the merging of, of computer and with human, you know, We've seen, and, and our society has been prepared for, for this uh, with all of these movies. I mean, hundreds of these movies would have the same theme of technology is there. The only thing that's holding it back is the prayers of God's people. And he's saying, come out of her. And I don't realize, I don't think people realize how deceived many in the church are. We've drank the Kool-Aid. We don't know it. Go to the movie and we end up thinking like the world, you know. Well, and then the next thing that you got to, that there were millions of hidden groups that escaped the first wave of these terrible disasters, and then revival broke out. And that yes. fits with the scriptures, too, because Jeremiah 51, verse 50 says, I believe it's there, or right close there, within a verse or two, it says, And yet a little time in her harvest shall come. So after this trouble, as I've been saying for years on the radio, after the trouble, then many people will turn to Christ. And that fits with what the Lord has shown me. I meditated the book of Revelation. I read it through 50 times and prayed in the Spirit three to five years ago, somewhere in there. And it took me several years because I would, wouldn't go on until I, I just like sat before God and said, show me, feed me this book. Show me what it is because I don't understand it. What I saw when the Lord began to show me the book of Revelation, it was, it's heaven, earth, heaven, earth, judgment, harvest, judgment, harvest, judgment, harvest. And so you see this pattern, and God never stops reaching out, even in the worst of the judgments in the end times. There'll be a judgment, and then there's a wave of grace and harvest that will come. That is the way God has always dealt with us. It's to rescue souls from eternity, you know, in hell. On down, you said that once they'd come out of this kiosk where they had taken the mark, they had this zombie-like look on them. Uh, the Bible says that 
those people that take the mark of the beast, uh, basically they cannot repent from that. That's right. Okay, and that's what, and maybe that's the reason because there's something that happens. It's like I said, it looked like a spiritual lobotomy. They had no more free will. They could not come back. And then you also saw police units, these guys wearing blue helmets. Do you think that that was UN? I don't know. They were light blue. Some of them, not all of them. Some just were black, you know. The, the, I don't know. Does UN have that? Yes. They have that. Well, they were light blue. They almost looked like the stormtroopers in, in a way, in, in uh, uh, the Star Wars or something, except you could see their faces. But the, the helmets almost looked like World War II helmets. Interesting. It was sort of a... Uh, it, it kind of had a, a lip to it, you know. I didn't see UN on it, and some of them just like they looked like they had caps, like just like a base, not a base, but no no brim to it, but just it was like looked like a cap. I mean, or or a beret type thing. Were they speaking they, English? Yeah. Did you ever see the movie um, I Robot? Yes. It was like that. They were in such sync. I mean, they didn't look like that, but <clears throat> they was just. They were like robots. They they didn't seem human. Wow. It was really scary. It, like they were all would turn at the same time. They would move synchronized completely. That suggests it may be farther in the future, maybe, perhaps. Maybe we can't do that now. Well, <coughs> either that or they've got it secreted away someplace and they haven't revealed it to us. But That's I know you definitely are talking about some things we don't know about yet, but that doesn't mean they don't exist. There's a whole lot I don't know. I can only tell you what I've seen and heard. The yeah. whole point of me bringing you on here, this was before I even knew you had this this awesome dream here. I uh, emailed you and I said, now, Maurice, I understand that you, uh, you have been shown that the reason America is split in two is because we force Israel to split Jerusalem. Is that correct? And you emailed back and said, yeah, and I've also had this other dream too. So tell us about that. Tell us that... Uh, about the splitting of, of America and Israel. I'm sure many of your listeners uh, know about the relationship, the covenant relationship that America has with Israel. You have to understand Israel and America are connected because our calling in America is to stand in the end times and help Israel as the Gentile and the Christian nation that would be the friend of Israel. So when we began turning on Israel in about 1991... Others have chronicled, the, as you know, of the disasters that have happened in America as they relate to Israel and are dividing the land. In Joel, it says uh, that, that God will judge those that part or divide my land. Joel 3, 2. That's right. So you know all these things before. You have to remember when you're dealing with Israel also, Sister Gwen Shaw said this to me, and when we're dealing with Israel and America, that isn't the new covenant. That's the old covenant, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. So as soon as there's an immediate judgment because you're dealing with the old covenant people, and God has put the nation of Israel in the end times as an anvil and as an immovable stone that the nations will try to divide Jerusalem and a sharp stone, they'll just injure themselves. So it's, it's the indestructible nation, basically. God is standing for her. Whenever a nation says, like Iran, it says, we're going to blow you off, the, we're going to wipe you off the face of the map, that, there's a mirror, and it just, it just bounces right back. That's what will happen to them. Well, so, that brings a question, because I know that a couple of days before 9-11, we turned against Israel. Uh, the day before Katrina, we turned against Israel. The day before the, the Deepwater Horizon, we turned against Israel. So are you saying that if we want to know when the meteor is going to hit, all we have to do is look and see when we split Israel? Well, of course, I didn't see a meteor, so I don't know anything about a meteor. Well said. (laughs) 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 This other fellow did. The other prophet or whatever. Okay, but it— Okay, let's put it this way. The splitting of America is associated with the splitting of Israel. If we force Israel to divide the city of Jerusalem, God will swiftly divide us. Do you think that would be the next day, the next month, or might, well, is that going to be verse seventy? Seventy chronicled. John McTurnan has done that. The relationship of disasters within forty-eight hours, twenty-four to forty-eight hours of something happening in Israel, an equivalent but exponentially greater event, mirrors that in America. I remember 
so clearly. It was in the New York Times. It was two pictures side by side on the front page. One picture had a woman that was a settler in Israel uh, that had lost her home and had been bulldozed. It was just wreckage. She was on top of that on her house, weeping. And then the picture right next to it, on the right, I believe, was a picture of Katrina and just devastation and houses, wreckage, and a woman sitting on top of her house. Wow. It was right there in the paper, you know, on the front page, full color picture. It couldn't have been clearer if God had shouted it out. I mean, that the relationship, see, because... They forced all the Jewish settlers out of Gaza and bulldozed their homes and just wrecked them the very next day. Now, you know Kerry is working, trying to come up with this Palestinian state agreement by April 29th, which is very near one of the blood moons, okay? Uh, Oh, it's yeah, it's coming right the week before, I think. It's over in Passover. It's exactly in Passover. Right, right. I mean, this is, you know, wow. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, so let's say they come up with an agreement. And let's assume that the splitting of America is associated with us splitting Israel, as you and I believe. Do you think that the America would be split with the agreement when they begin to move the Jews out or when the final Jew leaves for the Palestinian state? Do you have any opinion well, on that? I the question with... is, is it going to be with the paperwork, the actual beginning to move the Jews, or when the final Jews leave? I don't know, brother. Okay, go ahead. Fair. Okay. I don't know, but I do know, you know, don't mess with them. Yeah, don't, do, don't do that. That's, that's, that's stupid. True. That's you true. Know? I will bless them that bless you and curse them that right, curse you. Right. Right? I mean, okay. you know, whether it's the paper or it's the event, that's really dumb. But you see, people are so drunk on this wine of Babylon and of idolatry. They, the leaders, they don't see it. They're completely zombied out. So... They'll just keep going. Well, what's going to happen in the earth? This is important, Stan. What's going to happen with these judgments is it'll get to the place where, if you read the book, Prophet Ezekiel, you'll see over and over, and they shall know that I am the Lord by the judgments of God. See, they're trying now, they, they had a whole religious service at the, at the Congress, you know, uh, about global, war, global climate warming or change. I mean, they're they're like, oh, that's why all this is happening. We, you know, the, we we've got to do something with the the earth, and you know, and they still haven't understood that I am the Lord. And the more severe the judgments are, finally they'll have to say, the Lord, He is God. You know, He's doing this. Is God? This is God. He's Almighty God. And they shall know that I am the Lord. Look at that in the Book of Ezekiel. Uh, He says that over and over and over and over and over. And it's almost always after a judgment. Because, you see, it's to wake up people. I am the one true God. How can I possibly begin to tell you what you really need to know about the last days? We have so many DVDs at the Prophecy Club, but this particular DVD is a must-have. It's called Revelations for the Midnight Hour by Maury Scalar. And he covers 10 visions. These aren't just dreams, brothers and sisters. These are visions. And the 10 visions are the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the six Babylons, the vision of the mantle of Elijah, the vision of the 10 lamps, the vision of the Victorian mansion, the vision of the wedding supper, the closing of the gates, three wars of Israel, preparation of the bride, and the vision of heaven. All 10 of them, one DVD, valued at $30. We're making it available today for a gift of just $15. Call 785-266-1112 or go to prophecyclub.com. 785-266-1112, Visions for the Midnight Hour by Maurice Scalar. to the Prophecy Club. I want to keep talking about this tribulation dream that Maurice Scalar had. Yes, I know I talked about it with Maurice, but there's some other things in here. I I think this is really, 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 (laughs) really important. And I also have to say, if you have not got the meteor offer, if you have not heard Ephraim Rodriguez go through 
And because if you just read what we put on the internet, then you you probably got I don't know maybe a tenth of it. Because what he said in the DVD had more to do with America. It was a lot of new information that was not necessarily in his testimony. And it fits together with this. I mean, guys, I have to say, and I'm about to call a massive fasting and prayer because we have absolutely got to stop America from splitting Israel or it's over. I mean, our life as we know it is over if we don't get together on this. So let's go to the dream. Now, again, he was given this March 15th, and he said, I'm going to read it, and I'm going to just comment, okay? I know you've already heard him read it, but we, we need to go through it again. He says, this week I had a dream. It was a terribly frightening dream. I saw a huge angel standing suspended in the air over New York Harbor. It looked so large that it covered the night sky. His body was clad in golden armor as if he was going to war. His face and entire being were so bright that I could not gaze up at him for long. Now, you remember in Revelation, it talks about an angel clothed with the sun. Well, this angel is similar, or it might even be the same angel. White beams of light seemed to radiate outward from him in all directions. He was standing over the Statue of Liberty. It was at night. But I could hardly see the lights around him coming from New York City as he blazed so brightly with divine light. He reached for his belt that was covered with a red sash around his midsection and drew out his sword. It was massive. It blazed with light and fire all around it. It looked at least 100 feet long. All right, now, hold on. A couple of things i got to say. Look, guys, uh, I don't know if you're uh, able to discern the word of the Lord here, but this is the word of the Lord. When somebody says they have an angel come to them like this, this is on the caliber of Revelation. This is on the caliber of John the Revelator and what he saw and wrote. The only difference is one is one took place in 96 A.D. One took place in 2014 A.D. But this is on the same caliber when they're talking about an angel with white beams of light radiating out of him. When we're talking about an angel carrying a sword at least 100 foot long, that's big. Okay, this is God. Now, talking about that. Now, talking about the sword about 100 foot long, I remember in one of the other prophets that also said he saw that America was split. He said, I saw a large angel with a very long sword. And he said he ran this sword in the middle of the map of America and said, you split my land. Now I will split yours. Okay, so this is a real big, bad warning for America. And we better be listening. Now, back to the dream. I've never felt such fear when I saw an angel before. I just knew this mighty warring spirit had authority from the very throne of God. He had a grim expression as he held his mighty sword over his head with both hands. I could see that he was poised to hit the Statue of Liberty and cleave it in two. All right. Notice it says cleave it in two. That's the same thing that now, by the way, the count is up to nine people. I have nine people that say that the reason the meteor comes, the reason the tsunami and the split of America and the fall of the West Coast into the ocean comes is because America splits Israel. I have nine credible people. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a thing be established. So what do you do when you got nine people saying the same thing? I mean, somebody got to step up here and, and realize this is not foolishness, guys. This is God talking, and we better be listening. I could see that he was poised to hit the Statue of Liberty and cleave it in two. And by the way, that cleave it in two, <laughs> in other words, he's talking about he's poised, ready to split America in two. I think that asteroid, it is out there. Now, I don't know if it's on exact collision course with America right now, but if there's not one already heading this way, as powerful as God is that made the heavens and the earth, and he's threw the stars in place with his finger and called them by name, if there's not one heading this way, he can make one head this way any time he wants. Now, back to what I'm saying. I trembled and tried to hide, but the angel was looking directly at me, and I knew that there was nowhere to go that he would not see me. Then he spoke. His voice was like thunder. Well, you can look up in the Bible. There's a lot of places where it talks about when God spoke or when angels spoke, it sounded like thunder, and echoed through the whole harbor. 
He said, now listen. He said, how long will you refuse to humble yourself, O America? You have been weighed in the balances of God and found wanting. Your beginning was great and noble, but your end shall be disgrace and destruction. You see, you try to talk to the average person out there about Jesus, try to invite someone to go to church. Nah, they got too much. They're too busy. They're doing this, doing that. God's not first with them. They don't need God. They're doing all right. They got plenty of money. They got food. They got a dry bed. They don't need God. Okay, and that's their attitude. And that's pride. But God is about to humble the pride of this nation. When it says weighed in the balances, that's the same thing that God said through Daniel. When the handwriting was on the wall, he said to Nebuchadnezzar, you've been weighed in the balances and found wanting. In other words, America is doing more evil than she is doing good. Back to the dream. Thus saith the Lord God of heaven's armies, the Lord of hosts, time is running out. Now, let me read that again. Time is running out. Let me read it again. Time is running out. You see, I I want to believe that America was going to fall like on about or around or shortly after 2020. But, you know, this is new stuff. I mean, now all of a sudden we're threatening to split Israel. We split Israel and it's over. It's done. Stick a fork in us. We're finished. Thus saith the Lord of heaven's armies, the Lord of hosts. Time is running out. The bowls of my wrath are full of my fury and judgment. They shall be poured out upon you. You shall drink them down to the dregs, every drop. Now we know that Israel will be split because Joel 3, 2 says they parted my land. Okay, it has to happen. Also, Prophet Leslie was told by the audible voice of God, they will give the Palestinians a state. All right, so we know it's going to happen, but it doesn't have to happen this year. Hopefully not this decade. Hopefully it's not for another 10 or 20 or 30 years off. And that's what I'm doing. I'm asking you to join our fast track team. And here's the way you do it. You go to prophecyclub.com and you join the fast track team and you fast with us once each week. And what I'm going to start doing, starting this next week, I'm going to be asking everyone to fast and pray that we do not cause Israel to split. We do not split Jerusalem, that we just basically go hands off on that whole idea, and that we begin to bless Israel, because the Bible says, I will bless them that bless you, and curse them that curse you. Now, let's continue with the word. You shall drink them down to the dregs, every drop. I have come to you day and night, pleading with you to return to me. Now for over 100 years, I am merciful and long-suffering, And it brings me no joy to judge you. But you have hardened your hearts, scoffed at my warnings through my prophets and my holy servants. Now, let me say something about that. (laughs) I think I've earned the right to say something about that. Because since 1988, when I first ran across Dimitri Dudeman's message, I've been doing the very best I can to get it out. And I would love to tell you that I've had many people come to me and say, Oh, this is really of God. Brother Stan, how can I help you get on more radio and TV stations so you can tell more people about this warning? I would love to be able to tell you I've had people call and say, here, let me send you a million or a two or a three million dollar donation. How can I help you get on more radio and TV? Hey, I would like to be able to say I have hundreds and hundreds of people. I would like to be able to say I have thousands and thousands of people that simply say, Stan, I'll stand with you for a $20 donation every month. Okay, so how are we doing? Oh, I think we're like about three months behind in paying our staff now. Just got an email from my agent saying I need to make another payment for radio. (laughs) You know, it's really tight around here. In other words... America that is responsible to get the warning out to their other brothers and sisters have consumed it themselves. They heard the warning, or maybe they didn't, (laughs) but the ones that did hear the warning, they heard it, but they didn't do anything about helping other people hear it. Oh, yeah, maybe they copy a DVD, which only hurts our ministry because we don't get the money so we can reach more people. They think, oh, that's the way to do it. We're going to copy, we're going to give away DVDs. That way you don't have to send that money to that ministry. 
And I, I think God is not real happy with that <laughs> because that's the way that ministry is continuing and they are cutting the throat of that ministry. Same thing with putting it on the Internet. I know a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, a lot of people can hear about it on the Internet. Yeah, well, <laughs> like, for example, well, I, I won't even go there. I won't even go there. Let, let me just, it, it's not right. Let's, let's go on. It brings me no joy to judge you, but you have hardened your hearts scoffed at my warnings through my prophets and my holy servants. I brought you from nothing and exalted you, O America, higher than any other nation. But now you have fallen lower than Sodom. You have sinned greater than Egypt. You have become prouder than Babylon and Persia. You have become more selfish than Rome. You have exalted yourself in your own wisdom higher than Greece. You have more idols and high places of idolatry and luxury than any Gentile kingdom in history. Your beginning was pure and great, but now the stench of your skin and filth fills my nostrils. I shall cut you in pieces, and you shall reap the harvest of the wrath for what you have sown. You shall no longer be the queen of nations. Now you shall bear your shame and become the lowest of the heathen nations. Now as Agag. We'll be right back after this message. How can I possibly begin to tell you what you really need to know about the last days? We have so many DVDs at the Prophecy Club, but this particular DVD is a must-have. It's called Revelations for the Midnight Hour by Maury Scalar, and he covers ten visions— These aren't just dreams, brothers and sisters. These are visions. And the ten visions are the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the six Babylons, the vision of the mantle of Elijah, the vision of the ten lamps, the vision of the Victorian mansion, the vision of the wedding supper, the closing of the gates, three wars of Israel, preparation of the bride, and the vision of heaven. All ten of them, one DVD, valued at $30. We're making it available today for a gift of just $15. Call 785-266-1112 or go to prophecyclub.com. 785-266-1112, Visions for the Midnight Hour by Maurice Scalar. You must, I said you must get these two DVDs. Outside of the birth of Christ, I think this is the most important information since the flood. Prophet Ephraim Rodriguez was shown in a vision that a large meteor will hit near Puerto Rico and cause a thousand foot tsunami there, but it'll be 200 to 400 feet high and go a hundred miles inland on the east coast of America. It will also split America from the Great Lakes to the Gulf of Mexico and large chunks of California will fall into the ocean, killing millions of Americans. In a second DVD, I put the whole picture together, quoting six other people that also saw a large meteor hit Puerto Rico, four for the tsunami hitting the east coast of the United States, six, the split of America in two pieces, three, large chunks of California falling into the ocean, three also saw the reason for this is because America forces Israel to split her land. Get both DVDs valued at $60 for a gift of $30. It's good for the ministry, but you have to have this information. Call 785-266-1112 or go to prophecyclub.com. Get the Meteor offer today. Get it today. And now, back to the program. And become the lowest of the heathen nations. Now as Agag, you shall be hacked in pieces. O earth, 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 hear ye the word of the Lord. Now, you see where it says, now you see where it says queen of nations? Let me read this. Revelation 18, 7 and 8. This is talking about America. How much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, this is America. I sit as a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Now, why would America say that? Because the pastors are telling their people, you don't have to worry about all that prophecy because you're going to go in a pre-trib rapture. That's right. Jesus is going to return in the sky and suck you up into the air before any of this trouble starts. Therefore, you will see no sorrow. Therefore, her plagues shall come in one day, death, mourning, and famine. And she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord who judgeth her. Now, let's go back to the prophecy. 
Then, to my horror, the massive sword came smashing down on Lady Liberty. When it hit the top of her head, there was a blinding flash of light, and the sword split her in two, right down the middle. Now, again, that's what Ephraim is telling us that the meteor is going to do, essentially three things. The tsunami, the split down the middle, and the west coast falling in the ocean. Then the sword came again, and again, against her. It divided her in pieces. As the sword would finish each strike, fires would burst forth. I heard terrible explosions. The vision of the statue ended with an earthquake as it was hacked into pieces and sunk into the harbor. Now, in my imagination, trying to see what would happen to America when a meteor hits, and all of this world shakes, it makes sense to me that natural gas pipes would begin to explode, crude oil wells would begin to explode, crude oil that is stored in large tank batteries and also down in all of the gasoline stations would explode. There would be explosions everywhere, just like Maurice was shown. Now let's continue. I was weeping, crying out for God for mercy. Never had I seen the sight of God before. I had only really known the love and goodness of Him. Never had I seen the wrath of the Almighty. Then, as if I was watching, from a zoomed-in close-up, the dream shifted, and I started to zoom outward from New York Harbor and traveling across the air over America. What I saw was horror beyond anything I've ever seen. I saw the United States seem to have cracked in two with a giant earthquake right down the middle. And, of course, on the radio program just yesterday, he said it was right up the Mississippi River Valley, just like what six or seven other people have seen. Back to the dream. I saw the southeastern United States covered with a giant wave of water from the ocean. Well, what is that? That's the tsunami. So now this brings to nine the people that have seen this happen. I saw a massive earthquake that just seemed to crack off the coast of California. It reminded me of a saltine cracker that just cracked in two. Again, that's the same thing that Ephraim has. And that's the same story. If you get the meteor gift offer, I go through and I show you several people that confirm. They look, brothers and sisters, if you want to have any kind of a life, then you have got to get this meteor gift offer and you have got to. Let me just say, I'm just, I'm just going to say it, okay? I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to say it. You got to be a part of the fast track team. You got to join me in this fasting and praying that America will not split Israel, at least no time soon. Okay. We, we got to join together on this. All right. Back to the prophecy. The great cities along the West coast just fell into the ocean all the way from Mexico, all the way up to Alaska and giant waves flooded inland until much of the West coast just wasn't there. It had just disappeared into the Pacific ocean. Guys, that's big. Okay, that's big. Now, there have been a lot of people seeing California fall into the ocean, but I don't know as many people that have seen it associated with this meteor, like how Ephraim comes in and tells us, and then get to find out that there's several people that have seen this. So this has been confirmed through a mouth of a whole lot more than just two or three witnesses. Then I saw three giant rocket missiles that took off in the air. Two came from out of the ocean waters, and one came from land and traveled a great distance. All of them blew up in the air, one, two, and then three, in the upper atmosphere, all within about five minutes of each other. Now, again, those are the EMP attacks. Those knock out all of the EMP that knocks out every computer chip. That means every cell phone, every TV, every car made since 1985 will not start. I mean, our world has already been destroyed by just those three bombs. <laughs> just three bombs, and America is sent back into the dark ages. We're sent back to the pre-electricity times, because that turns off our electricity, and it would probably take several years to get the electric grid up and going again. Again, we, we've got to pray. We've got to pray and get God to delay this thing. Okay, it might still come, but just like if we can delay the Syrian thing and the series of uh, explosions, those suitcase nukes, we, we prayed that away, brothers and sisters. We, 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 we prayed a delay. We didn't pray it away. We prayed a delay. We got to pray 
a delay for this. I'm calling people. Go to prophecyclub.com, sign up to become a Fast Track member, and get involved with fasting and praying. We got to stop this, or at least delay it. Then it was out near space. There were terrible nuclear bombs, but the last one was the biggest, and it created a huge mushroom cloud over the Midwest part of America. Then the ground shook and everything went black. There wasn't any electric light coming out of any homes. In other words, the EMP has fried all of the computer chips. Then candles began to be lit and fires, and a little light was seen. There were other nuclear explosions, probably the ones landing up and down the east and west coast. And many people perished throughout the nation. There was just twisted metal and charred debris in the cities that once were tall and majestic. There was widespread looting and gangs roaming about everywhere with guns, stealing whatever food and supplies they could find. Then I saw what looked to be like elite riot police by the thousands go into communities and every city and force the people out of their homes, and they brought them into what looked like concentration camps. Some, but not all, of these police armies had light blue helmets on. Hundreds of thousands of people were arrested in this way. Many that would not cooperate were simply shot and left dead in their homes. But there were millions of hidden groups that escaped the first wave of these terrible disasters. Then revival broke out, and great evangelists and prophets and apostles rose up and began to preach to thousands outdoors, and many were saved and were born again. Miracles of provision multiplication of food and water, and astonishing healings occurred. Millions of people cried out to God, and he heard and answered their prayers. I knew that this was not just happening in America, but that the great tribulation was upon them. And all over the world, these calamities were also taking place. I saw multitudes of tribulation saints refusing to renounce Jesus as Lord. They were starving, many of them, but still refused to take the stamp on their bodies so they could eat and live. There was what looked to be like kiosks, and when I interviewed him, he described these as about 20 by 30 foot buildings that they could just offload off of a semi. They advertised food and water, but only if you went inside them and took the electronic mark. Some went in, Some bowed down to the holographic movie image of the Antichrist and were branded in their hands and foreheads with an electronic tattoo-like stamp. And when they came out, if they came out, they had a zombie-like look. Their minds and souls were gone. It looked like they had a spiritual lobotomy. Then these immediately joined the armies of those police units and were given weapons after they were fed and drank and rested in the kiosk. They were like robots doing the Antichrist's bidding. I knew that they were lost forever, but quite a few did not make it out. They were either tortured mentally, physically, inside this kiosk thing. But if they still refused the mark of the beast, there was a laser that shot through their brain and heart and sliced off their heads. And then immediately they were incinerated. Nothing was left but ashes. This was the most horrifying part of it all. It made the Nazi death camps look like a picnic, if that is possible. Millions of people were executed in this way via computer systems that just automatically, with such precision and efficiency that I marveled that something like this was even possible and that it could take place on such a large scale. The technology was far more advanced than I had ever seen. Then... I was back looking at the terrible angel of the Lord, and he said, Warn everyone, flee from the wrath to come. Repent and turn to Jesus while you still can. Pray that you might escape these things that are shortly to happen, and to stand in the presence of the Lord. Now, that confirms what Luke 21.36 says, Watch ye therefore, and pray always that you might be accounted worthy to escape these things and to stand before the Son of Man. Now, a lot of pre-tribbers want to say, Oh, well, that promises us a pre-trib rapture. (laughs) Uh, No, that is saying that if you pray, you may be able to escape such disasters and be supernaturally protected by God. But it doesn't say that there's a rapture. Now for the final two sentences of the prophecy. 
These things are about to take place. Turn to God and cry out for mercy. Come into the ark of salvation before the doors of grace close and it is too late. Blessings, Maurice Scalar. Again, brothers and sisters, this is real powerful, real important, and it only confirms what Ephraim Rodriguez and all of the other things we've been putting on the Prophecy Club through the years. It's only a confirmation to it. Now is the time to stop sinning and to repent and turn to Jesus with your whole heart so he can save you in the day of trouble. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your prayers and thank you for your gifts of support. God bless. And whomsoever much is given of him shall much be required. If God has blessed you and if this ministry has been a blessing to you, prayerfully consider joining the fight for souls by giving your financial support. We thank you and appreciate your faithfulness. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. How can I possibly begin to tell you what you really need to know about the last days? We have so many DVDs at the Prophecy Club, but this particular DVD is a must-have. It's called Revelations for the Midnight Hour by Maury Scalar, and he covers 10 visions. These aren't just dreams, brothers and sisters. These are visions, and the 10 visions are the Tree of Knowledge of Good and Evil, the Six Babylons, the Vision of the Mantle of Elijah, the Vision of the Ten Lamps, the Vision of the Victorian Mansion, the Vision of the Wedding Supper, the Closing of the Gates, Three Wars of Israel, Preparation of the Bride, and the Vision of Heaven. All ten of them, one DVD, valued at $30, we're making it available today for a gift of just $15. Call 785-266-1112 or go to prophecyclub.com. 785-266-1112, Visions for the Midnight Hour by Maurice Scalar. You must, I said you must, get these two DVDs. Outside of the birth of Christ, I think this is the most important information since the flood. Prophet Ephraim Rodriguez was shown in a vision that a large meteor will hit near Puerto Rico and cause a thousand foot tsunami there, but it'll be 200 to 400 feet high and go a hundred miles inland on the east coast of America. It will also split America from the Great Lakes to the Gulf of Mexico and large chunks of California will fall into the ocean, killing millions of Americans. In a second DVD, I put the whole picture together, quoting six other people that also saw a large meteor hit Puerto Rico, four for the tsunami hitting the east coast of the United States, six the split of America in two pieces, three large chunks of California falling into the ocean, three also saw the reason for this is because America forces Israel to split her land. Get both DVDs valued at $60 for a gift of $30. It's good for the ministry, but you have to have this information. Call 785-266-1112 or go to Prophecy Club dot com. Get the meteor offer today. Get it today. I've heard the testimonies of over 35 different people that have died and gone to heaven, but I think Dean Braxton's testimony is the best simply because he spent the most time there. He spent an hour and 45 minutes in heaven. He tells you what Jesus and the Father and the throne looks like and our new Jerusalem and our mansions, whether it's a pyramid or it's a square. Everything is based on love and is alive. How we communicate, whether we talk or just by thoughts, how we move, do we walk or do we fly, our relationships with our families and others, and our glorified bodies and garments and what they look like. Normally valued at $30, but you can call a Prophecy Club and get it right now for just a gift of $15 or more. That's 785-266-1112. I spent 45 minutes in heaven by Dean Braxton. 785-266-1112 or prophecyclub.com. Welcome to the Prophecy Club. I've got Pastor Stan on the phone with me today, and he's got newspaper articles. We're going to talk about them in light of Bible prophecy. Pastor Dan, welcome back to the Prophecy Club. Well, I'm always glad to be back home with you, but um, I don't know for sure if I'm real comfortable with all these headlines, but we should probably get right to Russia. Actually, before we get into the headlines, I've got a couple of questions for you. (laughs) So there's a little bit impromptu here, brother, but... I would like for you to tell us how God called you to start this homeless mission. 
Well, it was yeah, actually it was a Saturday night, and I w- <clears throat> I went to bed about ten o'clock, I think something about there, and then I uh, I started hearing, you know, the Lord started talking to me. He said, "Be the poor," and I said. Be the poor. What do you mean, be the poor? And I immediately knew whose voice it was. Um, and it was kind of like a, a being in a dream, but not being in a dream, being awake. It was, you know, it's hard to explain that part of it, but it was just like I was talking to you. And, you know, I, I it was kind of like a, not really an argument, but I was in disagreement because I was, I had a small congregation in Wichita and I was just barely making rent, you know. And so I, my back to him was, well, I don't have the money. And so he kept me up all night long until finally about six o'clock in the morning. I said, okay, I give up. I'll, I'll feed the poor. Even if it's just one day a week, I'll feed the poor. Just let me sleep. And so I agreed to it. And I, I, to make it clear with the Lord, I went out, I have a prophetic news service thing. And I went out and put it on my news service that I was, uh, going to start feeding the poor. However, I was going to do it. I didn't know yet, but that's how I, it started. Okay, but tell us the rest of the story, because as I recall, there was a miracle amount of food that was just dumped at your doorstep. Oh, you want to know about that? Sure. Okay, so this, this was on a Saturday night, and so I still didn't know what I was going to do uh, at all. Like I say, I put it out on my news service, and I had been going over every Tuesday to Wichita anyway and to minister to people. And so I went over on Tuesday, and I lurked around trying to find the poor, and I uh, walked up on— I, the the father finally led me to these two ladies that were feeding in the park, and I walked up to her uh, to him and I said, "Well, this is a real old grandma lady, you know." And and uh, I said, "Well, this is going to kind of sound weird to you, but I think I've been led to help you." Um, I w- the Lord kept me up all night telling me to feed the poor, feed the poor, and she s- started crying and she said, "Well, Saturday night I was up all night praying for the Lord to send me somebody to help me." Uh, feed the poor because we just couldn't do it anymore by ourselves. And so, wow, uh, I went home and put it back out on my news service, what had happened. And the next morning, uh, there was a, you know, there was a message on my answer machine from uh, Steve Quayle. And it, it was, a, it said, we need to get a hold of me. And I, I called him back and I said, Steve, this is Dan. Um, anyway, how, how do I, how do I help you? And he says, well, he said, uh, I read what you said on, on the news service. And, but, uh, I was, uh, thinking about it and I was, I was driving across our warehouse on the forklift. Lord spoke to me with an audible voice and said that you're to stick with Dan on feeding the people. And he said it, that was the first time I ever heard the audible voice of God. And it knocked about knocked me off my forklift. And so he said, uh, you know, he said, can you accept a donation of food? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, I don't think you understand. Can't you, uh, do you have a forklift? And so he sent me a semi load of of food um, just that much after as a confirmation. (laughs) Okay. Now, let me play this back. You hear the audible voice of God telling you to feed the poor. You're sent to this lady that had been praying all night long. Then Steve Quayle sends you a semi truck full (laughs) of food. And you were probably doing good at the time to feed your own face. Yeah, right? that's that's about exactly how it was. And let's throw in there that Steve heard the audible voice of God also. So um, there's there's uh, a lot in there, you know. <laughs> you couldn't. It was like you can't deny this, you know. Uh, and and that's where the God has always been with me. When He wants me to do something, when He moves on me, it's like He t- drops a ton of bricks on my head. You know, it's not something minor. Okay, so then you get this mission started. This food comes in. You're cooking and fixing and preparing, you and your little wife there, all of this food for all of these homeless people, they start coming in and people start getting saved and healed. And now, how is it going? If someone had a nice fat checkbook and a heart to really help the poor and they wanted to send you some money to help, what do you need help with? 
Well, the biggest thing is the winter overflow. The Wichita opens a thing called the winter overflow every year, and that's where they take them in just at night for a bed. That closes March 31st. Well, yeah, there's going to be a lot of men that are without a bed, but there's going to be a, around 20-some women that are going to be hitting the street on March 31st. We still don't have the woman's shelter finished. While we, think, we know that we're going to be able to get support, but all our answers is, well, let's see what it looks like when it's open. And so we got to get the door open, and we probably we need about four or five thousand dollars to get it open. Okay, and uh, it will house how many women? Well, it will. We can house up to. We'll be able to house up to about thirty some women. Okay, um, so if, you can take the overflow as far as women, but you need four or five thousand dollars to do it. Yeah, that's okay. This well, uh, look, I'm telling you right now, our God is big enough. The four or five thousand dollars going to come in. Matter of fact. It, it, can, it may even just come in from just one donor, but we're going to get that four or $5,000 for you. Lord, we just ask you to speak to the hearts of the people, just like you spoke to Steve Quayle, just like you spoke to Dan Catlin, to get this homeless started. Now we ask you to speak to the hearts of people to send the money in so those 20 or 30 women are not turned out among the butchers and among the ravening wolves in the street to be taken advantage of that they will be cared for and fed and clothed and housed. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you want to help, you just send the donation to a Prophecy Club, and you know it is for the homeless. Okay, let's go to those newspaper articles. Well, amen. Um, all right, State TV says Russia could turn the United States into radioactive ash. A leading anchor on Russian state television on Sunday described Russia as the only country capable of turning the United States into radioactive ash in an incendiary comment on the height of tensions over the Crimea referendum. Russia is the only country in the world that could realistically capable of turning the United States into radioactive ash, the Russian anchor Dmitry said. Anyway, Dmitry made the comment to support the argument that the United States and President Barack Obama were living in fear of Russia, led by President Vladimir Putin amid the Ukraine crisis. His program was broadcast as the first exit polls were being published, showing an overwhelming majority of the Crimeans voting to leave Ukraine and join Russia. He stood up in his studio in front of a gigantic image of a mushroom cloud produced after a nuclear attack with the words into radioactive ash. Americans themselves consider Putin to be a stronger leader than Obama, he added, pointing to opinion polls as they popped up on the screen. Why is Obama phoning Putin all the time and talking to him for hours on end? Well, Dmitry has earned a reputation as one of Russia's most provocative television news hosts, in particular with his often blatantly homophobic remarks. Well, it seems this rhetoric just keeps going on and on. And Obama even said today that military option was completely off the table to deal with Russia. Uh, Ukraine, on the other hand, says that they have now moved into a war mode with Russia because they look as Russia fixing to invade them, Ukraine proper, as I'll call it. Uh, so it's really heating up over there, and it really looks like Putin is expanding Russia's borders. In fact, he even laughed at, and said Obama was a comedian over his sanctions that he gave. Uh, Obama sanctioned several State Department people in Russia, Stan, saying, well, they couldn't do business in the United States. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's like saying, uh, I mean, five people can't come over to here to the United States and do business. That was the sanction. Okay. I mean, well, I've got several things to say about this. First of all, from God's point of view, I think what is happening is I think God is stirring up our enemy. Now, you remember what Solomon was told, that if the nation is righteous, then he will give us peace with our enemies. Well, if he can give us peace when we're righteous, guess what he can do when we're not righteous? He can also stir up enemies against us. And this is, in my opinion, the Lord stirring up our enemy. The enemy that the prophecies and the prophets and the holy men of God have told us is going to attack and defeat us. Second thing, all we are looking at here is, remember I told you guys, uh, probably, I don't know, probably a week ago, maybe two weeks ago, I played racquetball with a guy from Belarus, and he explained, he said, no, most of the people over there, they want to be Russians. He said, they consider this just to be an uprising. He said, what would America do if a bunch of illegal aliens come over here and started stirring up trouble? Wouldn't you put it down? 
And I said, well, I would like to think so. Of course, with Obama in charge, who knows? But at least it should be put down. Well, that's what he says. That's all they're doing is they're just putting it down. And he said, those people want to be Russians. And so essentially, we really need to back off and say, you know, uh, have a good day and just walk away. The third thing is, all they, they are doing essentially is a, a nicer, kinder thing than we did when we attacked Iraq and then Afghanistan. Because we, the truth be known, we attacked Iraq for its oil in Afghanistan, for its oil and its strategic uh, mineral reserves. And that's the first thing that Gazprom has done. Now that Russia has claimed that Crimea is now part of Russia and basically just annexed it, that Gazprom has immediately filed papers to claim all of the gas and oil for the area. In other words, Russia is basically taking over the gas fields of Crimea. And that's exactly what we did. So I don't know why we get all mad. These people want to be Russians, and the Russians want the oil. It sounds to me like a marriage made in heaven. But it is stirring up trouble against America, and it is making our enemy angry. When you have a news commentator openly say that we can make America a radioactive ash field, that's that's real serious. That's real serious. Okay, back to you, Pastor Dan. Shocking. Al-Qaeda operatives inside the IRS. Al-Qaeda spy and convicted felon West. We'll be right back after this. How can I possibly begin to tell you what you really need to know about the last days? We have so many DVDs at the Prophecy Club, but this particular DVD is a must-have. It's called Revelations for the Midnight Hour by Maury Scalar, and he covers 10 visions. These aren't just dreams, brothers and sisters. These are visions, and the 10 visions are the Tree of Knowledge of Good and Evil, the Six Babylons, the Vision of the Mantle of Elijah, the Vision of the Ten Lamps, the Vision of the Victorian Mansion, the Vision of the Wedding Supper, the Closing of the Gates, Three Wars of Israel, Preparation of the Bride, and the Vision of Heaven. All 10 of them, one DVD, valued at $30. We're making it available today for a gift of just $15. Call 785-266-1112 or go to prophecyclub.com. 785-266-1112, Visions for the Midnight Hour by Maurice Scalar. You must, I said you must, get these two DVDs. Outside of the birth of Christ, I think this is the most important information since the flood. Prophet Ephraim Rodriguez was shown in a vision that a large meteor will hit near Puerto Rico and cause a thousand foot tsunami there, but it'll be 200 to 400 feet high and go a hundred miles inland on the east coast of America. It will also split America from the Great Lakes to the Gulf of Mexico and large chunks of California will fall into the ocean, killing millions of Americans. In a second DVD, I put the whole picture together, quoting six other people that also saw a large meteor hit Puerto Rico, four for the tsunami hitting the east coast of the United States, six the split of America in two pieces, three large chunks of California falling into the ocean, three also saw the reason for this is because America forces Israel to split her land. Get both DVDs valued at $60 for a gift of $30. It's good for the ministry, but you have to have this information. Call 785-266-1112 or go to Prophecy Club. Dot com. Get the Meteor offer today. Get it today. And now, back to the program. Al-Qaeda operatives inside the IRS. Al-Qaeda spy and convicted felon Wes Russell is currently working as a financial management an- analysis under the IRS Deputy Chief Financial Officer. As reported by Patrick Poole of Pajamas Media, Russell was convicted of spying for Al-Qaeda operatives in 2008 for secretly accessing FBI databases to tip off Al-Qaeda operatives who were under surveillance. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. We know that there are many Obama's advisors are Muslim Brotherhood. What's going on? I think that when we are able to see everything in this life again, or I'll put it this way, if we knew the truth, I think that we would be shocked at some of the things that Obama and his administration are doing. 
I think that, as I've said, I think he's an illegal alien. I think he's a closet Muslim. I think he is a closet communist and a traitor. I think that it, once we know the truth, we will find out that Obama is working to destroy our nation, not to see it do good. And so this is only further confirmation. If you were to stack up all of the appointments, all of the mistakes, all of the, I mean, just like pushing for a Palestinian state, everything he is doing is working against our nation. And that's my opinion. Back to you, Pastor Dan. Funny you should mention the Palestinians. The Palestinians want to drill for oil in Judea and Samaria. The PA announced tender for oil exploration includes the fact that the exploration area is in a region under Israeli control. The cash-strapped Palestinian Authority is looking for oil in Judea and Samaria, but in areas under Israeli control. Mohammed Mustafa the Deputy Prime Minister for Economic Affairs announced on Tuesday that the PA is requesting proposals from interested firms to explore and develop oil in the region. The license extends over 432 square kilometers. Anyway, progress has been hindered because many other projects are to take place in Area C, the 60% of Judea and Samaria that was left under full Israeli control at, under the Oslo Accords. In fact, revealed AP, this project is well to take part in areas under Israeli control. According to the map released by the PA, the exploration area covers a strip of land along the frontier with Israel, most of which remains under full Israeli control. Back to you. Well, and when I saw that article come through, I immediately contacted my attorney and I said, look, I want to throw in a proposal because I know a lot of people might say, wait a minute, you want to drill out what would be the Palestinian area? Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, that is, is a high priority to drill in that area. For why? Okay, well, one is the Bible says that oil is there. That's one of the places. It's called Samaria. And if you needed to, I could actually dig you out the scripture. But if you'll order the DVDs that I've made on, on oil, I go through, and that's one of the scriptures I'll show you. The next thing is, on April 15, 2002, my wife was shown this dream I've talked about many times, and it had seven points to it. Arafat would go and die in the hospital. Israel would give the Palestinians a state, be a temporary measure to allow the Israelis time to strengthen the military. Then oil would be discovered, and the oil would make the Jews willing to fight for their land. Now, where would the oil be discovered that would make the Jews willing to fight for the land? Would that be in the areas that is going to be in Israel's territory when they split with a Palestinian state, the Palestinian state? No, that would be over in the area that they actually give to the Palestinians, meaning this particular area, in my opinion, is probably part of the area that oil will be discovered it in, and I would like to be there drilling a well and discovering that oil. And, of course, we know that eventually it's going to be presented right back to Israel because the rest of the prophecy goes on to say that Israel and America will go against most of the rest of the Arab world, and other prophecies says that Israel will be victorious in World War III. She'll go back all of her land from the Euphrates all the way back over to the Nile. She'll be raised up to be one of the richest, wealthiest nations. Jeremiah 33, 7 says the captivity of Judah and Israel will return. The word for captivity means a former state of prosperity and will build them as at the first. <laughs> well, what does that mean? In other words, back when Israel was the wealthiest nation on earth. When was that? That was when Solomon was king. When Solomon was king, that kind of wealth is going to return to Israel once again. And how is that? Through olive oil? No. <laughs> I had lunch with uh, a guy that also does a radio program on Bible prophecy, and he saw, I think, all those uh, those prophecies about oil in Israel. It's all talking about olive oil. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but let me give you this scripture. Jeremiah 33, 9 says, It will be a joy and a praise and an honor before all the nations of the earth, which shall hear of all of the good that I do unto them. And they shall fear and tremble for all of the goodness and for all of the prosperity that I give unto Israel. Now, I don't think massive amounts of olive oil is going to cause all of the nations to fear and tremble over Israel. I just can't see it. Also, 
Jeremiah 33, 14 says, I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of Israel and unto the house of Judah. Here, I'll give you another one. Ezekiel 16, 55. Sodom and her daughters will return to their former estate. In other words, Israel will be raised up to be a wealthy, strong nation once again. Ezekiel 16, 53. I shall bring again the captivity, that's the wealth, of Sodom and Samaria. So there's your scripture that tells you that oil will be found in Samaria. That's what the area is that they want to give to the Palestinians, or they don't want to give them to the Palestinians, but that's certainly part of the area that they are proposing to be uh, part of the area that they give to the Palestinians. So if you want to know the scripture, Ezekiel 16, 53, there you go. It says oil is in Samaria. Okay, back to you, Pastor Dan. Well, first off, that article is really amazing because I've been hearing you talk about the conflict with the Arabs over the oil for a long time, but that's a direct confirmation. But number two, you know, on my radio program a couple of years ago, I interviewed a Jew, Orthodox Jew rabbi, a teacher in a university. It's really hard to talk to an Orthodox Jew. It took me three weeks to get him to the point to where I could get out of him what I wanted. Make a long story short, what I wanted to know was before Messiah Ben David, that's what they call the, you know, as you know, their uh, the Savior. Um, before he comes back, what is the one prophetic thing that you're looking for? Is there anything? And he proceeded and took weeks to tell me all the things that had already happened. But the one thing that he said, what they were waiting on is that. It can't happen until Israel comes to the fullness of its riches, that it never has came to the fullness of its riches. And it has to happen before the Savior comes back. Here, let me give you another one. Ezekiel 36, 10. And I will multiply men upon you. The cities shall be inhabited, and the wastes shall be built. And I will multiply upon you man and beast. I will settle you after your old estates, and will do better unto you than at your beginnings, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So the discovery of oil in Israel is part of what will lead Israel to turn to Christ. Now, not all of them, we know, not everybody's going to turn to Christ, but many, many in Israel will turn to Christ because the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob gives them massive, massive, amounts of oil. Dan? All right. We've talked about this one before, but another suicide has happened. Rash of finance pro suicides baffles experts. The financial world has been rattled by a rash of apparent suicides with some of the best and brightest among the finance workers who have taken their lives since the start of the year. A majority of the eight suicides have been very public demonstrations, which suicide prevention experts are just puzzled about. Jumping is much less common of a method for suicide in general. So I'm struck by the numbers that have occurred in recent months in this industry, said Dr. Christine, chief medical officer of the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. He also discounts the location of the act as being the driver behind the reason for the suicide. The suicide search literature doesn't help much with the question of why the method of these suicides is so out in the open. And there's a list, I'm not going to read them all, of the people that have jumped from six-story buildings or jumped in front of a train. And this list isn't the big, while they say that this list said there's only eight, we heard that the number last week week was over 20. Now they can, anybody can look at this article. If you want to go to the prophecy club.com and when you get over there, look at the prophecy club blog spot, go to the blog spot, this article and many others will be posted over there, but go over there and read it. But so what's going on in the financial world that all these people are committing suicide or do you think they're suicide? Oh yeah. Well, okay. Uh, Now let me just say right up front, I don't think anybody that is at least talking is saying uh, that they know th- those that know don't talk and those that talk don't know. OK, so I don't really know, but I'll tell you what I know about the financial. We know from prophets, we know from inside sources that there is about to be a global currency reset. I've talked to you briefly about that. Uh, matter of fact, Lindsay Williams has made a whole DVD on it. In other words, all 204 currencies are about to be reset overnight, without warning, and according to Maurice Scalar and Daniel Davis and a couple of other, I think Shane Warren also said that the dollar is going to fall from another 30 to 50 percent, and eventually it'll be worthless. 
right now with this problem in Crimea, and this kind of ties back to the other Crimea thing near the Russia there, Russia is threatening to dump dollars. And they're also trying to get China to go along with the dumping. Now, if Russia just begins to dump the dollars that just Russia has, many of the financial experts say that the dollar could fall like a rock in terms of value. That means, of course, when the dollar falls, that means the price of gas and groceries and everything else we buy outside of America begins to rise rapidly. The things we buy inside of America begin to rise quite quickly as well. So all of a sudden, everything starts costing 30 to 50% more. That means if things cost 50% more, that means the price, well, 50% higher. If it were to uh, say fall 100%, then obviously the dollar would be worthless. So we're looking at some real big problems in the world of finances, and it may very well be that these guys have been caught with their hand in the cookie jar and they just cannot face the public scrutiny once it comes to light, and it's about to come to light. Second thing I'd like to say is there are groups of people out there, like, I don't know, I'm going to say probably 20 of them, that post on some blog sites. They call them DNR gurus, and they keep coming out with information saying, this is when the DNR is going to revalue. This is when the global currency resets going to revalue. This is what so-and-so and such-and-such says, and this is a meeting they just had and you know and one of them said that a lot of these guys and this is before uh, the suicides were even uh, really starting at this point they said that there's been a lot of evil in high places that has been getting by with a whole lot of this evil for some time within the banking uh, establishment and that when this global currency reset takes place when it finally hits that their hand is going to be exposed, and many of them are going to be going to jail. So I have to suspect that some of these boys are, maybe they just got down. Some of them maybe were thrown off the roof, but some of them, we cannot escape the fact that some of them might not have wanted their families to be drugged through humiliation. Maybe they didn't want to go to prison themselves. And it may be that they're actually been caught with their hand in a real evil, dirty cookie jar. And this was their way out rather than going to prison. Pastor Dan. I agree with that assessment fully. I read those same articles and I'm in that agreement. So we're out of time, brothers and sisters. But I do want to say thank you for listening. Thank you for your prayers and thank you for your gifts of support. God bless. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. You must, I said you must get these two DVDs. Outside of the birth of Christ, I think this is the most important information since the flood. Prophet Ephraim Rodriguez was shown in a vision that a large meteor will hit near Puerto Rico and cause a thousand foot tsunami there, but it'll be 200 to 400 feet high and go a hundred miles inland on the east coast of America. It will also split America from the Great Lakes to the Gulf of Mexico and large chunks of California will fall into the ocean, killing millions of Americans. In a second DVD, I put the whole picture together, quoting six other people that also saw a large meteor hit Puerto Rico, four for the tsunami hitting the east coast of the United States, six, the split of America in two pieces, three, large chunks of California falling into the ocean, three also saw the reason for this is because America forces Israel to split her land. Get both DVDs valued at $60 for a gift of $30. It's good for the ministry, but you have to have this information. Call 785-266-1112 or go to prophecyclub.com. Get the Meteor offer today. Get it today.